All right. Hello. Uh, out there in the interwebs, I am uh, working on the Kajimi again today. I'm in a little indirectly, but definitely working on the Kajimi. I'm going to fool around with some test uh, SMD soldering, which is like the surface mount IC soldering. Um, these are, I think these are SOIC, what is it, 20, 18 or 20 pin? I can't remember how many pins. Um, you'll see shortly. So what I'm going to do uh, is, um, it's probably not the smartest in terms of, uh, you know, practicality. I'm going to, uh, so I ordered the version one voice cards and uh, it's have since then they released a version two voice cards which use different um, chips. And what I'm going to do is use the version 1s as my practice chips. Uh, they're a bit expensive. I kind of feel dumb using those, but I don't have any others on hand. And I don't want to have to do a Mauser order of cheap chips and pay 8 or $9 or whatever it is, or DigiKey, and pay shipping just to get cheaper. So I have those around, so I'm going to use them. Hopefully I only have to do, I don't know, one or two and or maybe you know three or four and and test them out <clears throat> hopefully get the hang of either i'm i i think i'm going to start out with hot air i have a hot air rework station so i'm going to try um <clears throat> i bought some kind of syringe uh flux and i also bought some um solder paste in a syringe uh so i'm going to start with those and practice a little bit and, and see if I can get the hot air rework going. Um, that seems to be, to me, maybe one of the easier ways to do it. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, and then if that's really bad, then maybe I'll go back. I did buy a different soldering tip that's kind of the hoof style shape with the little concave uh, end that kind of holds a little pool of solder for kind of drag soldering the tips. Um, those are some other techniques that I've read about as well. Maybe I'll do those. I was going to start with that, but I I think I'd like to... I've never tried the hot air, so I'm going to give that a shot uh, because it would be fun to do the hot air rework. So I think that's what I'm going to do today, and, and it's probably going to be a shorter stream where I just uh, test solder a couple of these and then I'm done. Um, I was going to put the kind of legs to hold the voice cards onto the, what do they call it? I guess the motherboard, or I don't know what they technically call it, but say the motherboard with the main processor on it, but put the kind of stand-up legs that would hold the voice cards with the standoffs. Uh, but I don't think I need to do that today. It's kind of in another box and things, so I think I'm going to wait on that. Um, and that's just prepping it. I was going to just put the motherboard onto the hardware board and sandwich it all together and put the screws in and the standoffs and stuff. But um, I think I'm going to wait on that and just kind of double check some more of the connections when I have time here. I didn't have a lot of time to do that this weekend. But just kind of look over the boards, maybe clean up things here or there if, if need be, kind of verify some things uh, before I sandwich on the motherboard to the to the hardware board. Um, and then once that's done, you know, hopefully I'll have the, you know, either the rework station soldering uh, going or the drag soldering, one of the two here. Uh, and then I can go ahead. There's eight. There's one chip for each of the eight voice cards. So eight in total. Hopefully that will I can get it practice going and then uh, finish up the eight voice cards. And then somebody on the Kajimi build group posted a kind of uh, pinout for, I guess, I think it's for continuity testing. So you could, you know, put it in the uh, through hole hole and then touch the leg of the pin and see if it has continuity. I don't know. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to test each board, each IC that I solder on there and make sure that they're okay before I move on to anything else. Uh, and then I guess what that would leave, the only other surface mount stuff are the either resistors or caps. I don't know which ones they are, but the, they're the small ones too. I don't know the 80806 maybe or smaller. I don't know what, I can't remember the package names, but it's one of the smaller, uh, 
surface mount resistors or capacitors that I will have to solder onto the voice card as well. And there's, a, you know, a handful of those per voice card at least. Um, so I'm going to look into how I might approach that as well. Last time I did it with just a soldering iron, and I could do that this time. Um, I'm If the hot air rework goes well, maybe I'll just touch a little bit of solder paste through the syringe on each of the leads and tweezer all of them on and then just hot air uh, all of them on. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this all goes. But this is just kind of, this may be a short stream. I'll just do a kind of first foray test into, uh, you know, doing the hot air and see how it goes. Um, if it's a disaster, maybe this will be like 10 minutes. I'll try it out and then come back and reformulate and come back on later. I don't know. We'll see. So um, I guess that's it. Let's let's see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over to the other view. And there we are. And then I'll see you in a second. Okay, I've unmuted that mic over here, set up over here now. Uh, I do have the microscope set up. Uh, I have it on this stand so I don't burn the desk. Uh, I did put some thermal tape. Uh, here, let me grab the mouse. Hold on a second. Here we go. Let's switch over to the iPhone view there. Uh, I did uh, put some thermal tape onto this kind of PCB holder thing. I don't know if these, how well these things, I'm assuming they kind of build them a little bit for heat, but uh, maybe not so much. So I just kind of stuck some, some uh, thermal tape on there. Hopefully that'll help a little anyway. And then maybe I should thermal tape the other um, circuit boards we're not doing, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna see what happens. And these are kind of wafered on together. Um, there's, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and I'm going to just be doing one today, maybe two. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, just leave them together so it gives it a little more surface area. I don't know how that'll affect it. I mean, it's more similar to what the board will be like because it's even bigger, so it'll eat up even more. But uh, And then here are the, uh, the ICs I'm using. Uh, these were originally the originals. These are the uh, SSI 2144s. Um, from the first voice voice boards. Uh, here, let me switch back over here for a second. Yeah, so those were those, and that's what I'm going to use today as my practice chips uh, before I do the real ones. So let's go. Let's go ahead and do this. I think I'm gonna the way the focal length's really high on the microscope because of the stand. So I'll have to stand and and do this, which is also kind of weird. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but here's my solder solder paste. Uh, not sure the best way to show you to you. Maybe I can show you in this camera. Um, yeah, I think that's going to focus. So there you go. What did I get? I got the Amtec uh, stuff. And here, I'll just kind of scroll down that to maybe you could read it. I can't read it in the screen while it's on there. Okay, so what is this? This is the NC559V2TF. It says it's tacky flux. Uh, and boy, this thermal tape, like, actually is giving me a headache, it, like reeks. It is like one of the worst smells ever. I don't know what's, what's going on with this stuff, but it's making me feel terrible. So hopefully that doesn't continue. Uh, okay. What is it? Uh, da, da, da. it says that its range is 138 to 270 Celsius. Um, ba, 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 ba. yeah, I don't know. That's it. It's their tacky flux. NC559V2TF. Uh, so that's the kind of flux I got. And then um, for solder paste, I got, who makes this one? This is made by, uh, well, I don't even know who makes this. It's okay, it's 247 solder. Uh, again, I'm not sure exactly if that's the company or not. It says this is the trademark. 
Um, it's the 247 low temp 15, uh, low temperature lead free solder paste. T4 15 grams. Um, it's 137 uh, to 278, so almost the exact same range as the flux. Uh, so their temperature ranges uh, match perfect. It's no clean solder paste. Okay, uh, there you go. Um, the expirations are like April and July of next year, so I have a little time to use this stuff up. Probably won't end up using all of this, obviously, but we'll see. Uh, now, it came with these little tips in here. This is all new to me. You know, like I said, I haven't really done any surface mount stuff, but there are these, these little metal tips uh, that have plastic uh, collars on the bottom, and it looks like it goes into the top of the syringe. So I think these are applicators, uh, and I, I think one of them might have been for the flux, and one of them is for the uh, solder paste. And then there was a plastic one that looks like it's a much finer finer tip, which I'm guessing I would use for my, my paste there. Uh, so I'm planning on using that really pink, plasticky, f super fine tip one for the solder paste, and then maybe one of these metal applicators. I think these are the exact same. No, they are two different diameters. One's larger and one's smaller, I believe. May they're close, but I'll probably use the, the smaller of the two uh, to, you know, for the flux as well. Okay, uh, and then I have a an, a multimeter here. I'm, this multimeter is kind of cheap, kind of sketchy. I don't know how well this will work. Uh, when I've done continuity before, like it, it barely beeps. I don't know if it's broken or <laughs> what, so I'm a little concerned about having a terrible multimeter to do this kind of work, so we'll see how that goes. I may have to replace that. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. So, and then I have some tweezers here. I have some more flat ones and some really pointy ones. Uh, and I don't know which is going to work better. We'll, we'll find out for these little chips. I thought maybe the flat ones you could grab the IC from the sides better. I don't know. And then, of course, I have my uh, hot air rework station here. Let me switch back to uh, this cam. And then maybe what I can do is uh, zoom out a bit uh, from this one for a second. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of the manu manual focus. Yeah, there's my rework station. It's a little bit dusty, obviously, because I don't use it much. Uh, this is definitely a cheapy station. I think I bought this thing for $50 or under Amazon or some such thing. It's the 858D. Uh, and, you know, and over here again, I don't know if you guys could see that before, but those are kind of the applicator tips, the flux, the solder and the different application tips in my tweezers. All right, so I'm gonna focus back on the board here, kind of closer up, and leave that one there. Uh, I don't know which angle we're gonna do. I think we're gonna switch over to the to the microscope soon. So here, while I prep this, we'll, we'll keep it on here. Um, so here are my uh, IC chips. I'm gonna pop, pop one of those out. Okay, three came out, of course, so I'm going to put some of these away. But you know what I'll do? I'll leave two out just in case we want to, we feel adventurous and want to go uh, further. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to grab this guy. These flat ones do seem to work pretty well. I think we're on uh, this chip. Oop. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to uh, the microscope view now. You could see me kind of putting that on there, but um, that's not the right view. There we go, that's the right one. Okay, here, and I'm gonna flip this guy around. Reason I'm flipping this around is I see that zero is, or one, oops. Hi. Boy, as soon as you lose grip of anything with tweezers, this becomes a nightmare. Okay, there we go. Um, I don't think you can see it in the polarizer, actually. It's actually polarizing like a little too dark. Let's, there we go. Uh, that's a better view. Um, so there's the, the chip, and you can see the, the dot in the top left. And my top left of my board here is the, uh, is the um, number one. 
And uh, I can see from looking at this now, I didn't notice this before, but uh, that is uh, uh, more than the amount of pins on here. How many pins are on here? Four, eight. So these are only 16. So these are 20 pin, uh, you know, mount boards, but I'm only using uh, 16 pins. And that's fine. Um, these are, you know, Kind of like default ones to break it out into uh, standard header pins. Uh, so in my view here on the camera, okay there, that's much, much, much better. You guys still in focus? Yes, you're still in focus there, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to put these over here. I'm going to get my mouse nice and out of the way so I don't melt it for any reason. Uh, it's going to be loud. Uh, well, before I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy. I guess you can't see that on there, but I'm going to uh, kind of switch back to this view. Uh, I am going to uh, take my so uh, solder paste, or I mean my flux, has this cap on the back. I'm going to go ahead and uncap that. It's a kind of uh, oxygen seal, I think, and then go ahead and pop in the plunger for the the syringe and I think there's like a I don't know if I just leave that in there yeah I think we just leave that in there there's like a, a white cap in there I'm not sure if I'm supposed to uh, pop that out at this point uh, I think I'm gonna try to leave it in there but I'm gonna take screw off uh, what I was saying is there's a white cap in here uh, and I think I'm going to need to pop that out. Uh, I, I don't know if I need to pop it out. There, there's this black syringe that goes in here. I don't know if you're supposed to leave that in there or not. I'm going to leave it in there. Hopefully it'll do air. And then I'm going to pop this guy off and replace it uh, with the smaller of the two applicators. If I can... Boy, this is uh, feels really tight. <clears throat> okay, well... This may be our first challenge is how the heck do you get this tip off of here? Use this guy somehow to, no, I don't know, I don't know. No, this looks sealed. I'm assuming it's right tight, left loose. Maybe I need a pliers. Yeah, it was just really, really tight on there. Okay, there, take that guy off. I'm assuming we replace that once we're done uh, with our work session. And then I'm gonna go ahead and twist this guy on there. Boy, they're really tight, tighter than, I thought these would just be hand tight, but I guess it makes sense uh, when you're, assuming these are pretty oxygen sensitive, you know, so, or, or air. I think that's about as far as it goes. It's a really weird feel. Uh, if you get, you got to kind of just feel it, and it was really tough to feel that. Okay, so uh, now we got the applicator on there. I still left, like I said, I left the white thing in. We'll see how that goes. Uh, now this says one thirty-eight to two seventy. Uh, you know, I actually don't know the conversions off bat. One thirty-eight to two seventy. I guess. Uh, let's see. When I turn on my, okay, this says three hundred off the bat. So I'm imagining. Uh, now the question is: is is this display in Celsius or Fahrenheit? It do, it doesn't it doesn't say. Uh, which is kind of janky, but I'm going to assume uh, that is Celsius because 200 is very low. Uh, so we're, we're going to go, uh, so this says 138 to 270. Let's, I don't know, let's try 200. I'm not really uh, so sure. Um, I'm going to set it at somewhere kind of in the middle there. And I'm going to set it down to 200 and see how that goes. Uh, so there are two, I know there are two things you have on the hot air. You have the speed of the air coming out, uh, the kind of fan speed that blows it out, and you have the temperature. And uh, 
I've heard that you want to set it somewhere in the middle between four and five. Uh, you don't want to blow your component off either. Uh, so I'm going to assume uh, around, I'm going to do four to start with. And I set my uh, temperature to 200, and I believe that is Celsius. So I hope so. Uh, we will see. I'm going to move this chip over here out of the way. Okay, all that stuff's kind of out of the way. Somewhat organized over there. Okay, uh, what do we need? We need, so we need our flux and plunger. And now we need to work on our uh, solder pits there. So I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see if I can hand. Okay, this one came off by hand pretty easily. The other one was more uh, stiff. Boy, that solder looks like it wants to come out of there already. Okay, I'm going to stick this on. Kind of tighten that in there. I'm going to go with the plier situation. Okay, I, I see. Uh, it just basically backed itself out again. Um, so I guess if you go too far, it just kind of... Uh, messes up and backs out. So I think I have that correct now. Boy, I, I cannot see on cam. I'm gonna have to switch over to the microscope now uh, because what I wanna see, there we go, put me on there too. What I wanna see is if this tip uh, is actually has a hole in it or not uh, because I can't see from naked eye. Okay, I am too close. Oh boy. Depth of field is so shallow. My goodness. Okay, I can't tell at all even from that. I'm assuming that there is a hole in there. Uh, if there's not, we may have to cut the tip of this. Let me see if I can tell with just the, the loop. Boy, it's tough. Hold on, I'm going to take my headphones off. Yeah. Okay, I, I had to use the little 8x uh, loop magnifier, but it looks like there is a tiny hole at the end of the solder pit, so uh, that's good. So I'm going to put these two together. That's for the, these are for the flux, and this is for the solder pit. Okay, so I have my solder paste kind of ready here, and my flux ready. Uh, my microscope uh, looks good. Uh, I will want to move the chip into place better, obviously. Some of the pins aren't lining up. Um, now, what do I want to do? I think what I need to do is uh, take this chip off, and I'm going to uh, put some paste down, I believe, across. I've seen people do this on online. So I've seen different this done different ways. Uh, some people squirted the paste just all over the pins in a line and then just straight up hot aired it. Uh, and I have seen people flood it with a lot of flux. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is put a little paste down over all the pins and then squirt a bunch of flux on, on top maybe and then place the chip or paste chip then flux. I'm not, I'm not I'm not actually sure here. Um, I think I'm gonna do what I said first. Maybe do, um, you know, paste flux then chip on it. I don't know. Uh, boy, this is tough. Like I said, the, some of the videos I saw online, they just put the solder straight down and then went for it. Um, you know, maybe what I better do as well is uh, take move, remove the chip here and maybe just use some alcohol first and just kind of really uh, clean the surface, the pins off. Uh, that couldn't, couldn't hurt, I don't think. So I'm gonna use, this is like really uh, great isopropyl alcohol, like 99% or what have you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just try to really clean up uh, my pins. I'm gonna dry that off here. This is not a lint-free uh, towel or anything. Hopefully I'm not introducing a bunch of lint. If I am, I can try to get those off. But that looks that looks clean to me. That looks not bad. Okay, so uh, there, did a little cleaning job. 
Uh, let's try it. I'm going to squirt some paste on there. Yeah, you're at the right view over there. Uh, can I do this? Okay, let's, what I want to do is move this back into position and see where I need this to be. Like what I'm trying to do is gauge where the paste goes. And I think it's right where those white lines are. Yep, that's why they have them there. Okay, so those are the feet. So that's where the line of paste needs to go. And what I'm talking about are, if I can point to it through here, are these leads here underneath. So that's our line of, you can see that's right where the feet are gonna line up. So that's where the paste will need to go. So I'm going to attempt to put a little line of paste across those lines. I think I see the paste coming. I know maybe I don't. Okay, I do see. It. I see it coming up through the tube there. Okay. Oh boy, it doesn't want to stick to anything, does it? It's really uh, dry. It doesn't feel right. And I tweezer it on there somehow. I don't know if it's supposed to be this dry or again, this is a, an experience of uh, lead free versus leaded or what have you. But maybe what I'll try to do is squirt oop, a little line like that. Push that off there. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll come here. Same thing there. I kind of, yeah, I did get it to, ooh. boy, this is super tricky. Oh, you boy. Okay, I thought I could finesse that other one back over there. Because it was a little thin, but not so much. Now I got a lot there. Okay, well, it was a pretty big glob in that one spot. Uh, but... Overall, I think I kind of did it. Now, let's go ahead and flood with some flux. Okay, I'm wondering if I need to remove this white thing. It is compressing it. Okay, it was coming out. I didn't see it. Okay, that seems like a lot, but let's go for it. Okay. And I'm also not sure if in, inside or outside is better. Uh, I'm going to kind of go, maybe I'll do a little bit of both. Okay, we'll, we'll call that good. Okay, good. Now let's take our chip and see if we can get this guy on here. There, I think I kind of got that aligned. Uh, not too bad. I'm going to call that good. I don't want to mess with it too much. And now, okay, so pull off my hot air station now, and it's starting to heat up. I can feel it already. Like I said, it's on four. Uh, and maybe what I'll do is just start heating this right away. Uh, you can't really see it that well through the thing, but I am doing it. I'm trying to, oh boy, that, that melted quickly. So did the paste. Okay, I see, see, okay, we are blowing it around a bit. Maybe our uh, temperature's high, or I have uh, too much uh, of whatever on here. Ooh, 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 ooh. There, 
Or I got too close, perhaps. I don't know which. Okay, it does seem like it's... I don't know how much I need to worry about that. I feel like I'm making it worse. I know, like, kind of capillary action, it wants to kind of go where it should, but I feel like I'm way out of bounds here. I'm going to move this like that. And try to get this aligned better before I go for it. Okay, they're somewhat close. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat again. I think I just got too close when I blew it away there. We're definitely too high. I don't know if that's a problem or not. It's hard for me to tell at this point. Maybe I can kind of get close and blow it down a bit. I don't know. Here, I'm going to turn on my fan. It stinks. It definitely liquefied everything, but it doesn't seem to be getting to that uh, kind of, I don't know what you want to say, boiling point or, or melting point to where it's actually going to... Uh, set the pins. I am going to try to adjust this again. There we go. Hopefully I'm going to hit the... Uh, I keep removing it. I don't know. I don't know how picky I have to be about the angles and things, but hopefully I'll get to a, a temperature where this thing melts. To me, it looks like I used way too much solder paste. Uh, that's my immediate impression here. Uh, flux, I don't think, matters so much. The paste, I think, does. Okay, maybe we need to go up in temperature a bit because I feel like I'm heating quite a long time and I'm not really seeing anything. Uh, so, I'm quite close now and holding it for a long time. I don't see the, the board's definitely not uh, getting too hot or anything. Uh, so. Oh, there. No, I did see it change. This side definitely did uh, melt. Looks like I have a bridge between one and two. Oh, there it went. I saw this side go. Okay, here I'm going to give it a little extra uh, and make sure we, we get everything going there. It's hard to look through here and do this at the same time. Uh, so those look like they, they actually did go. It looks like I got a bridge between one and two maybe. Seeing if I can get that to come out. Uh, it's very difficult to tell maybe another couple bridges in here. I don't know. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to put my, this back and now I'll try to inspect this thing uh, and see what we got. Uh, can I get closer? Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, I think we're actually okay. It looks like, uh, what is this, 18 pins? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's 16 pins. So pin one and two are bridged. And boy, it's hard to tell. I know uh, uh, 14 and 15 are definitely bridged. Okay, here I can get closer with this. Definitely getting closer. Uh, 
Okay, let's check that out. I don't know about, what is that? Uh, 8, 11 and 12 possibly in there? I, it's really difficult to tell on this angle. I think I'm going to try to change it. Uh, but those are definitely bridged. So, uh, I forgot my the wire, my solder wire, or uh, er, uh, brake. I have some around here somewhere. Uh, and that way we could uh, suck that up. Um, I just have to find it now. Uh, where that go? Here's some. Not sure how great this stuff is and if it's going to work well uh, for uh, these parts. We can try. Uh, let's see. So, okay, wait. You guys on your screen, that looks very dark. Let's see, can I change this? Oh, there we go. That looks better for you guys. Okay, yeah. You see that stuff going? Um, there. Okay, so let's try to, uh, oh, how should I do this? Now I feel like I should be using uh, a different, the soldering iron here and a different tip. Let's check these out. SMD flow tip. SMD flow tip. Which one's smaller? I feel like we want the smaller of the two. I bought two different kinds. Which ones did I buy? I did SMD flow tips. These are tech spray soldering irons. That's what it says on here. Uh, if you want, the, these are Mauser. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, that just the, these are the manufacturing part numbers. HS0530 and HS0531. Uh, and I think the 30 is smaller than the 31, I want to say. And I think that's the one I'm going to go for. I'm going to take a look at it. So I'm going to pop that out and uh, I'm going to put that in my iron uh, and see what this see what this looks like. Uh, maybe what I can do is switch over to the other view for you. Uh, which view is that? That's not the right view. Oh, it is the right because I'm standing in front of it. Okay, so this is the tip I, I popped out. It's like a hoof tip, and I believe it has a reservoir. It just has some solder in there to protect it. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is screw out uh, the collar on my iron, pop out the tip I'm using now, pop this one in, and pop the collar back on. Um, there we go. Now, uh, so let me look at uh, 200, oh boy, need a mouse. Hold on a second here. So let's do this. Let's look at, uh, oops, 200, maybe I'll come back. Uh, to this camera. Okay, here we are. What I'm going to do is come to uh, the CRG9. There we go. Uh, and so let's uh, 200 Celsius to Fahrenheit. So what is that? Oh, I don't have this, the mic on here. But I think you can still hear me. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Here we go. Um, so let's unmute both these mics. Okay. So what do we got? 200 degrees Celsius is 392 Fahrenheit. That's quite low. Um, but, but that actually worked. It took a little while to heat up, but uh, it, it looked very gentle. Like the board didn't smoke, the flux didn't smoke or anything. It just kind of uh, got warm and then you could just see it change all of a sudden. So I, I'm happy with that temperature. I think uh, it seemed to do well. It looked like I had way too much solder paste, but then the paste tightened up. I mean, I think I did have too much because uh, it, it did bridge in two, at least two places, uh, which isn't great. Uh, if I had probably less, I think it may not have done that. Um, so 
but overall, that that seemed uh, pretty efficient. Uh, I'm happy with that so far. I mean, I have to try to inspect under and see if there's any other bridges and things. But uh, and there may be actually three bridges. We'll see. Um, but for first tests, I'm very happy with that. No, nothing smoking and uh, look pretty good. Uh, what, what what else was I gonna look up? Um, there was something I was gonna look up before I did this. Huh? What was it? What was it? Uh, huh, well, there was something I was ready to look up, not just this temperature. I guess that, I guess it was the temperature because I need to know, I'm going to set my iron to uh, 392 to, I guess, desolder these. Maybe I'll do a little higher, maybe like 400 or so. Uh, and, and that's why I was doing that. Yep. So I can uh, know the temperature, hopefully, to get it a nice uh, temperature to desolder those um, bridges. So let's try that. I'm not sure how this is going to go. I switch back over here. Take this with me. OK. Back over here now. I'll mute that microphone out just in case. And OK. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to turn on my iron. You know what? I never change the temperature on this iron hardly ever uh, I'm gonna kick this down and uh, figure out how we how do we change this boy this is tough Okay, there it says adjust. Okay, there are seven, uh, three, four. It's really weird the system here. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do four hundred, like I said. Let's try that. And then how do we get out of here? Oh no no no! I did it. I started changing it again. This thing is not super straightforward. This Heiko uh, iron. I don't know how we get out of. The menu now. Press both. Because if I hit the up, it's going to just go up. How about if I hold enter? Holding enter doesn't seem to like it either. How about if I press hold enter and then press the first one? No. Okay, how about if I, no, if I press that, it just keeps making it go up. Maybe I just turn it off from here? Let's try that. I'm going to turn it off, turn it on. What's it going to set? No, it set it back to 750. So I'm going to press up to go into set mode. Okay, adjust. Okay, pressed up and held it. Uh, there. Now we're set this to 4. Good. Set this to 0, 400. Of course, I went past it. Okay, there. Can't we press and hold the enter now to get it back? How do we do that? Press up after we press enter. I have no idea. How about holding the up after I had pressed enter. No. How about 401 if I press it? No, it won't do it that way either. How do we lock this thing in? 400, okay, there. If I press enter, it just keeps shifting to the next one, and if I press up, it's changing the temperature. So, how about both? Both. Yeah, I think if I press both, I pressed both really quickly. And it didn't change anything. If I hold them, will it go off? No. Enter and up. This is what I thought it would be. Boy, this interface, terrible. Uh, okay, how do we set this thing? Uh, this, is, this is one of those things where uh, you think it's going to take about like 10 seconds to finish something to keep moving on and uh, maybe this will end up taking an hour. <laughs> it's the way things go I guess. Okay. Uh, no. It's still making me change the temperature. How do I change this? Confused. Uh, I tried pressing... You only have two buttons. Uh, one button one button changes which digit you're changing. The other button changes it up. 
I originally pressed the button and held it to get it to adjust mode, uh, but that's not getting it back out. That's just, it, ju it adjusts it up one number, but doesn't give it back. Let's press and hold enter again. Oh, now I'm bumping my microscope. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to take it. I'm not sure how we're actually going to change this. Um, I tried both at the same time, and that seemed to... It definitely does not change the numbers or anything, but it's not doing anything. It doesn't, like, set it in, or... What if I press enter and then let go of this one? Oh my god, I think I'm going to have to Google the manual, unfortunately. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Maybe you uh, press it now, both of them, and then turn it off and turn it on? No, it set it back to 750. Oh my god, so pressing the up gets you into adjustment mode. Okay, let's quickly do this. So now, adjust. Yeah, I want to go to 400. Adjust. Okay, keep going past it every single time. Okay, there. Now I'm done with that. Uh, is there, how do we lock it in? Maybe with the enter. I press both of them and turn it off, maybe? Let's try that. Turn it off, turn on. It's gonna go to 750. <laughs> okay, I am definitely gonna have to adjust this because uh, I have no idea how to actually save this adjustment now. Okay, so that was at 400, and instead of 450, we're gonna go to 400. Okay, there, I have that on there, but now I have to look up how you actually save this. Uh, I need my mouse. Woo! Too many moving parts. Okay. Let's see. show this a different way. They just show pressing and holding enter. That is, I, I don't know about this. Because I think I have the 888D or whatever, and it doesn't seem to be doing this at all to me. Or maybe just let it go. I don't know. Hey, let's see. So they, okay, there. I did this differently. It said adjust. Uh, so three, four. Okay, so I did do it a little differently. And then press again. Should pressing in there. And now it's locked in at four. Okay, and now it's dropping. Okay, so it did do it. I, I was holding the up over there. I don't know what adjust is. Hopefully I didn't uh, mess anything up over there. But uh, you had to hit the enter, press enter and hold it, not up and hold it. And then it goes into the... You can change this setting and then it uh, saves it. You press enter again. So I'm letting this drop now, uh, this tip, get down to that 400 mark. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off in the thing here. Okay, it definitely, did. does this one have the reservoir? I don't know, I can't see exactly. Okay. And then uh, let's, let me grab the mouse again, and we'll switch on over to uh, the microscope view and see what we can find out. Uh, so here, let's move this up. Lost my mouse. Okay, there it is, and we're going to go to uh, that view. Okay, great. Uh, is it great? Why are we... 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, now let's see. Can we get this? Can we get this in for you guys? There. Let's work on uh, number one and two because th those are definitely bridged. I can see it through here. I believe you guys can see it as well. Uh, and let's try uh, using the braid. Well, this is tough because I can't sit. Okay. Can I do it this way? I see the flux kind of moving around. I don't think that's hot enough. Let's get it there so hopefully I can see it change. I may have to increase the temperature on my iron a bit. Not sure yet. Oh no, it came right out. There we go, good. Okay, those look good. Not bad. Uh, let's switch on over to this side. Can you guys see that? Uh-uh. Yeah, you can. Uh, the, what do you call it, looks a little different. Uh, I think I need to change the, this guy. No, that's a little worse for you guys. Okay, it is a little glary on your, or shadowed somehow on your on your side, but that's the way it's going to be. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go for this again. Uh, now, is that one bridged? Boy, I cannot tell up there. I, I know this, uh, what is that? Uh, how many are on here? 16? Uh, 14, 15 are definitely uh, bridged. I think it's a bad idea I'm hitting all the others, probably pulling all the solder off of them collectively, which is not what I really want to do. Maybe I shouldn't be adding so high. Oh, there, good. Look like there's a little more in there. I can't tell if that's solder or flux or what's going on inside there. I'm going to try to just suck that out, whatever that is. There, that definitely looks cleaner. I can't tell if the one next to it has it as well. Really difficult. I'm going to go ahead and give that a little heat. Okay, I'm going to leave that and now check this out. Uh, how do we check it out? Let's see if we can do this. Throw this up on edge maybe? Okay, our, our thermal tape is giving me where the depth of field is uh, super tough. I don't know if we're going to be able to get that much depth of field. Maybe this direction we can. Yeah, I can't see anything this way. It's just blurry. Getting anything that way? No. I'm getting something there. Wish I could see inside more. Trying to just slightly put it on angle. 
so I can see if I'm getting uh, any of the bridges. Okay, that's not bad. That, I see it's much uh, smaller moves you gotta do. I'm concerned about, what is that, pins uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, thir 13, and 14. Look like they are possibly bridged, but it's really hard to tell. That's why I'm trying. Maybe I can get tighter. Maybe I can rotate this around a bit. Maybe I can do it this way. Hitting my fan. Where's our chip? There we are. Maybe it's better to do it this way in general. Let's see if we can adjust our polarizing filter. Okay. I think that angle is better. Um, it does look like there's gunk in there to me. Looks like there's looks like there's a lot of solder inside there to me. And I think I killed this with solder, because there's definitely big beads beside it here. And those look like not even melted this one on the far left. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead in there with the iron and the wick again. And see if we can pull some of this stuff out. Definitely getting solder. There. I get it. Definitely pulling stuff up. I just can't tell whether I'm actually getting those blobs back between the pins or not. Like there's one. I see it. Try to get this solder there. I think there's just a lot of solder sitting back there. Same with this one, I can see it. Trying to get it to suck into the wick here. There. I think I did it. Uh, now I'm a bit concerned about pins over here. What is that? I'm going to try to pull some of that off. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to pull those off. Okay. There, that looks a lot better. It looks clean. Hope I didn't pull too much off, but those still look clean to me. Uh, those look like they might be fine. Okay, and let's go on this side. And I think we're probably going to end up doing the same thing. I'm trying to get it on a bit of an angle uh, so we can kind of... Wait, I keep doing the wrong, wrong control. Yeah, this looks really heavy too on the on the uh, far side here. This end looks really uh, like way too much solder in there. Just run along the whole thing. Kind of seeing how that works. Ooh, I don't want to spread it around though either. Maybe that's what I just did. I think I just bridged uh, this one in the middle here by doing that. out of focus. There we go. Ooh, I can definitely see those those two I, I uh, either pulled out or
Yeah, I see it melting. Got a lot on there, I, th I think. Doesn't even seem like it's sticking to this wick now. Maybe I need more flux on here. I don't know if I need more flux. Looks like there's flux on there, actually. Hard to tell. This is all kind of so new to me, and it's it's really difficult to find like a, a baseline, I guess. And also, working through the microscope is really weird. Um, this is kind of half in focus for me right now and half not. I think I definitely bridge right here. I'll try to get not off the feet, but just off the board here. It looks like it's bridging. Maybe I just don't use the wick right now. There we go. Yeah, they're okay. There. Uh, boy, that's hard to see. Uh, what's going on there? It's definitely not uh, centered on the pins. Uh, I'll try to get this level now. Okay. Okay, there. Focus is much better on my end. I don't know how it is on your end. Oh, not bad on your end either. Okay. Uh, I actually think. I mean, it's obviously a mess, but for my first solder, uh, I think it looks like it might actually work. <laughs> I don't know. Tough to tell, tough to tell. Uh, this side definitely looks a little cleaner. I had to reheat it less times. Uh, it is not perfectly centered. I don't know how important that is or is not. This side definitely isn't perfectly centered either, but they actually, when I'm looking at them, it looks like they all have connections I'm showing you guys in the camera. It looks like they all have connections, actually. And I don't think anything's bridging. Uh, that's my sense. Uh, there is quite a bit of paste left. Or not paste. Uh, um, oh, what do I want to say? There's a bunch of uh, the flux left. Uh, I will want to cotton or, you know, try to get that out of there with some, some of these guys. I'm going to do that now. See how this looks. I think what I'm going to try to do here is uh, test this one now and just see how, how it looks like if it's actually um, going to work or, or not. Uh, again, I'm just using like alcohol, and this is a cotton free swab here that I have. Um, and this is like the really high end, you know, whatever 98% alcohol. It's not just from the drugstore or whatever. Okay, there, I kind of alcoholed this up. Uh, let me try to get this off with this other thing. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, maybe I'll just use the flip side to dry it. It is kind of just spreading the flux around. I don't know how I'm going to... Definitely going to have to, I think, scrub. Scrub and rub this several times to get this off here properly is my guess. It seems like the alcohol is just moving this around. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done this at all. Use a little more alcohol. Uh, I need to find, I had just a little piece of tissue. Oh, there it is. I'm going to try this just tissue. This is just paper towels. Hopefully I'm not going to put too much uh, 
stuff with the paper towel in there. I don't have any kind of like pads, like lint-free pads or anything around right now. So I think what I'm going to do is just dump a bunch of alcohol on here. Keep doing that. And also, uh, and then pat it off and just see. I actually think it is coming cleaner uh, doing it this way. It's just going to take several kind of repetitions uh, to get it to get it really where it needs to be. Let's take a look at that now. At last, it looks pretty clean. Okay, no, I still see a bunch of flux there. Take a look at that now. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good in your view. Uh, let's look at that now closely. Grab as close as we can get. I think we want it to be there. Oh, that one might still be bridged. I don't know what pin this is. This pin right there. Uh, can I point with the tweezer? Uh, what is that? This one. Uh, maybe it's not. I think it's just flux gunk. I definitely see something dark in there, but when I stuck the, the tweezer actually fits in there. It doesn't seem like that's anything. I mean, maybe it's solder paste and I just didn't melt it either. That would be bad. Um, but it's definitely goopy in there. I think it's just flux. And same on this side. Um, it looks pretty good though. Uh, I think what I'd like to try now... Uh, well, there's some gunk there hair or something. I'm going to try to clean this off a bit more, some more alcohol. And then maybe what we can do is, uh, I don't know what we're supposed to do, continuity testing or something? I don't know, to the pins? And, and see what happens there. Okay, well, uh, I don't know. For a first solder, I think I, I'm okay. Uh, it looks like it, it is connected. Uh, I think I got all the pins, you know, soldered on, actually. Uh, the question now, I guess, is just, are they actually going to, uh, are, are there any bridges? get back from this until there we go it's a little more depth of fill a little off um, let's do this I don't think anything is bridging now uh, it's really hard to tell uh, what's going on under the board uh, but I, I can't I can't see any obvious bridges like between pads so it does look like there's extra gunk under there whether it's solder or flux or what have you in a couple of the pins like pin between pin 3 and floor 4 uh, looks a little gunky maybe I can just slide this under there and see what I can see if it's I don't know I don't think it's solder though. It could be flux and gunk under there. But I don't think it's solder. I, I think I got it. I guess maybe what we could do now is try like pin, let's try pin one and do a continuity test and just see uh, where we're at. Let's try that out. 
So I'm going to go to, where's the continuity thing? Here. Uh, and then mode. And that's that. I think this is our continuity. Okay, yeah, there. You hear how it's kind of... I'm just touching the tips and it's like that shaky. I don't know why it's so crackly. But anyway, let's try. Let's see. I'm going to put this one here. Okay, we got there. And nothing here. Okay, let's try two. So I'm assuming this works. Maybe you just need this distance. Okay, that worked. It's not, I'm not getting anything there. Let's try four now. Yep, we're getting a signal. Nothing on three, two, or one, or five. So I think this is it. Five is good. Nothing on four or six. Oh, there's six. I was skipping one. Six. Nothing on five or seven. There's seven. I think I got it. Yep, there's seven. Nothing on eight or six. And there's eight. Nothing on six or nine. Okay, good. So I think we did our first side correct. Okay, and then let's pull this guy over. Okay, let's do uh, 11. Um, get this guy going. Oh, wait, not, it's 13. Right? Yeah. Because the first two are blank. 13. Boy, it's hard for me to get this position. 13. Nothing on this one. Okay, 14. Well, it's hard to get these angles, right? 14. Hopefully you can see these. I'm going to move this down a bit here. Oop, too much maybe. There. I'm going to go, which one was it? Was I on? 14, I think. 14. 14. guess I need to touch the leg to really know because if it's soldered it has to go through the leg so maybe I'll retest 13 yep we got it nothing on 14 oh there's 16 nothing on those there's 17. Nothing on that one or that one. There's 18. Nothing on 17 or 19. There's 19. Nothing on eight, 18 or 20. And there's 20. And nothing on those guys. So what I should do real quick is retest these guys. And uh, just make sure uh, you won't be able to see the first couple on my side, but I'm doing the legs just to make sure we're getting cutting any three legs. Correct. Two is correct. One, nothing. Three, nothing. Okay, three. Correct. Two, nothing. Four, nothing. Four. Correct. Three, five. Nope. Five, good. Nothing there, nothing there. Six, correct. Five, seven, nope. Seven, yep. Eight, se nope. Okay, eight, correct. Seven, nope. We're good. So that is actually a properly soldered chip. Now, I don't know. I mean, it is a little off, uh, but, but we are making contact everywhere. Uh, I don't know about the flux cleanup. I did use no uh, no clean solder paste, I believe. Let me read this again. Lead-free solder paste, no clean flux. Okay, and and this Amtech stuff, you know, it actually doesn't say whether it's no clean flux or not. 
I thought I'd try to buy everything that was no clean. I'm going to look this up online and uh, again, because I bought this a while ago, and see if this is actually the no clean flux. Okay. Um, but there you go. That, that was successful. And that was actually pretty uh, straightforward and seemed uh, pretty, actually pretty easy. Uh, so I am going, I'm going to say a very successful test. Uh, so where am I going to go? Let's go back to this camera. Okay. Uh, in our, in our multimeter to work just fine there. I think maybe touching just the leads or something, maybe it needs the, the resistance of the circuit or whatever to do it better, but it worked perfectly. Okay. So there you go. So, uh, and the other thing I was going to show you was this. Uh, I can't remember who was on the Kajimi build group, but thank you very much for this. It is a, this is the IC on the voice cards. And then those are all the pinouts, the numbered pinouts to each of the 18 leads uh, that you'll need to test for continuity to make sure you solder it correctly. So I'm definitely, thank God they made this. I'm going to use this uh, to test out all the chips after I do each voice card. So hopefully that will rule out uh, any voice card uh, IC chip questions once I actually get them soldered on there. Uh, I think the next test might be, I don't know if I can do it here. Maybe I'll do it on the version one cards. I'll just take one of the caps or, or resistors that I haven't done yet, and I probably have extras. I don't know if they transfer to the version two, because I tried to reuse as many parts as I could for version two cards. But if I have some spares or something, maybe I'll just try to hot air uh, some of those on as well. It, it seems from what I've done so far that that is definitely going to be the way to go. Uh, it was a challenge to get the paste on there properly. It, it seemed very thick and very, uh, I don't know what I want to say, it wasn't very uh, sticky. Uh, it didn't want to stick immediately to the board. Um, it also seemed, I, I did use quite a lot of flux and I, I might want to increase my temperature a bit. It took quite a while to heat it up to temperature. And then it didn't seem like, I think I could have burnt off more of that flux maybe with the temperature. I don't know if anyone else out there has suggestions in maybe upping my temperature a bit. I, I did that at 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, I mean, it definitely melted it and it worked fine, uh, but I'm, I'm wondering if I should go a little higher maybe to, to kind of do it faster and to kind of burn up more of the flux. I don't know. But uh, I'm super happy with that. Yay. I mean, it, it like was pretty somewhat painless. <laughs> and uh, I have all the leads working. It may not be the most beautiful solder, but for uh, an attempt one, uh, uh, that's awesome. So I have eight more of these, these pads to play with. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, keep going uh, the next stream or something and do more of these. Or maybe what I'll do is uh, also put some flux on and desolder one and then, you know, practice soldering and desoldering and, and see how that goes. It'd be kind of a good skill as well. Um, this is a bit exciting for me because it's kind of adding uh, a little bit more to my skill now with the SMD stuff. Uh, I've kind of finally done it, so it feels good. Uh, and it actually worked. It wasn't a complete disaster like the drag soldering. Um, I can see now from just doing that with the braid uh, with the proper tip, that hoof tip with the reservoir seemed to work a lot better than the tip I had before. So I think if, uh, I think my suspicion is I've been running my uh, iron way, way too hot. Uh, I think I was doing 750 Fahrenheit, which is quite high. Uh, I mean, it, it worked fine, but I think that was some of my problems were running the iron too hot is my guess. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but at any rate, uh, it seems like it's all kind of working out now. So hopefully I'll, I'll practice on this more. Maybe I'll do another afternoon stream or tomorrow. And and I want to do at least, you know, three to five more of these, hopefully. And then probably try to see if I can test a cap or a resistor with this method. And if I can kind of get comfortable, uh, then I'll finally move on to the voice cards and try to bust out the eight ICs and then the caps or resistors, whatever's on there and try to use the hot air gun. Uh, it seemed to work flawlessly that uh, the cheapy 858D seemed great. Uh, it worked really well. 
Um, so I'm really happy with that too. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of the, the goal. And then, uh, I think, you know, if I can just bust out these voice cards, then essentially all my, uh, hardware or all my circuit boards have been soldered and completed. Then I can kind of carefully move on to some diagnostic testing, like test out the power board and things, and then start thinking, and then finally do, you know, kind of a detailed, uh, maybe microscope inspection of all the, all the joints and see if I can, you know, just give it two or three looks over and verify that everything looks good and then maybe move on to uh, that final motherboard assembly to the hardware board and then you know starting to hook things up in whatever sequence seems best and uh, go go towards the firmware steps to try to, to do this. I'm a bit worried I've seen other people with these calibration nightmares with calibrating the voice cards. Boy I'm just like so uh, praying that I don't have uh, a lot of issues there or or what have you so we'll see how that goes okay i'm gonna leave it here uh maybe i'll be back this afternoon or tomorrow like i said and continue on with some of this if i don't see you have a great day take care thank you always forget this mouse not quite gone